Well, folks, hey, good afternoon. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is Dan Sullivan. I happen to be the RVP for the uh, Eastern Region for Conducive Technologies. And excited to uh, talk to you today about uh, how our, our patented uh, velocity IO reduction software is, is helping folks get 2x faster SQL performance in their environments, uh, and some even more. So uh, without further ado, we'll get started. Um, we've also spared no expense today and have joining me on the, on the webinar is Gary Kwan, uh, otherwise known as GQ. GQ is Conducive Senior Vice President of Technology Strategy. Uh, GQ, you out there? Hey, Dan, I am here. Glad to join you. Uh, don't let Dan fool you. He's, although he, he says he's a sales uh, rep, he's very technically minded, but I'm here to handle the deep dive questions, Dan. And you know, Dan, one thing we do like to make uh, these sessions is make it very interactive. And that means if you have any questions, and we welcome all questions, and I think, Dan, as Dan says, there's never a bad questions. Uh, you'll, you'll see a question box over there. Just type in your questions and we'll either answer them during the session or we'll get to all of them at the end of the session. So uh, put them in there and we do like to make it interactive. Thanks, Dan. Well, GQ, thanks very much. And uh, as you can see already, folks, GQ keeps me honest here uh, during this presentation. So thank you, GQ. Uh, and so with that, uh, again, thanks for joining. Um, excited to share with you what it is our patented uh, IO reduction software can deliver for you today. I thought first I'd give you just a little bit about us. It's only one slide. Um, many, of you, many of you may have known us from our previous life. Uh, we were the Disk Keeper Corporation. Uh, we've been in business 38 years. Um, and at that time, we were the world's preeminent disk defragmentation software. Uh, sold over 100 million copies of Disk Keeper worldwide. But in 2012, uh, as many of you may remember, the world virtualized and you no longer defragged a SAN or an SSD. And so because of that, uh, GQ and his engineering team totally respun our software. Uh, so where today we are actually two filter drivers that sit in the Windows OS uh, and not only prevent fragmentation from occurring, but also a patented caching engine that caches those performance robbing read IOs that it actually learns the application, learns those what are performance robbing read IOs, and automatically without any, uh, any need for you to inter intervene, puts those performance robbing read IOs into idle and available DRAM 10 to 15 times faster than flash uh, for the application to use. So with that, uh, our customers see on average around a 30% reduction in I.O. to their back-end storage. And now that reduction uh, results in anywhere from 50 to 300% or more application performance improvement on existing hardware even in all flash environments. So we'll talk more about the technology and give you plenty of examples of customers uh, that are see, you know, have seen that. That caching engine I mentioned is actually OEM'd by nine of the, the 10 top uh, PC manufacturers, a few mentioned here, HP, Lenovo, and others. Uh, it is so intelligent and so smart and actually has such a small footprint uh, that they, they OEM'd it from us uh, and they put it into their uh, workstations and, and laptops. Uh, you don't see us because, again, they OEM it and put their name on it. Uh, and for what it's worth, um, because of what we do around I.O. reduction and in the past, you know, uh, disk defragmentation, uh, Microsoft actually OEM'd part of our technology and put it into Windows as the original defragmentation software. But today it's all about virtualized environments and improving performance there, though we still work in physical environments. Because of that, we're a close partner with Microsoft. We're also a very close partner with VMware because of what we do to improve performance and reduce I.O. in virtualized environments. And 
centered around our discussion today, SQL is a very sweet spot for what our patented IO reduction software can do. And just recently, uh, we certified under what you see here as the Microsoft SQL Server IO Reliability Certification. And it was GQ and his team that, that earned that certification. GQ, you want to talk about that for a second? Thanks, Dan. And uh, this is a very uh, elite certification here. You know, Microsoft has these types of certification to make sure third-party products like ours are fully compatible and reliable with their products. And in this case, uh, SQL Server. Not only did we have to go through some stringent testing, but also we had to face a uh, panel of uh, Microsoft SQL experts and answer their questions. But we did fine and we have this certification and we're the only software vendor that has this certification. But we are in good company with other hardware vendors like EMC, Dell and HP. So we're in good company. This is a nice accolade for us, Dan. Thanks. Not sure is GQ and congratulations to you and your team. And again, folks, just another point to demonstrate to you the work and the, and the potential benefits we can provide in SQL. By the way, the tests were run in Azure, so we're very relevant in a cloud environment. Uh, and during those tests, uh, our software actually improved performance around 30% 30, 30 or so. And that's without even optimizing the environment. So pretty cool. One other thing I wanted to mention here before we continue on with the, with the presentation is for attending today, you'll each receive a free, not for resale, NFR copy of our Velocity software for a server, a VM. It's a $525 value, uh, and you again, you'll get that after the presentation's over, uh, and we'll talk about how we can work together to implement that in your environment. So that's really all I'm gonna say about the company today. Uh, we do, we focus on IO, we focus on IO improvements, and we do a lot of surveys of IT professionals uh, on an annual basis. And this year, uh, in doing that survey, and, and in this question here, talking about you know uh, your uh, intensive applications running on SQL and what about performance, 28% of folks mentioned that they have slow SQL performance, and that number has actually been creeping up, believe it or not, over the last few years. You may think it might kind of go the other way with some of the hardware implementations with Flash and Hyperconverged, but you know, as you'll see here, they while they may solve or seem to solve the problem initially, over time, uh, the, the IO problem continues, and you'll see why it does in virtualized environments. So interesting result. Uh, from uh, our surveys. And included in those surveys, we made a little word map here of what appears most often in all of the answers. And you can see right off the bat that SQL is the number one mentioned uh, application that has some performance issues. And believe it or not, seven of our 10 new customers buy our patented IO reduction software to help boost their SQL performance. Uh, so uh, some interesting statistics for you. So what happens to I.O. in a virtualized environment? Well, as you know, virtualization has been great for server efficiency, but it has been horrendous for I.O. performance. What you'd like to see is depicted here in this slide, the most efficient I.O. environment possible. Large contiguous writes emanating out of the Windows OS, you know, each VM, hitting the hypervisor, moving down to storage and back again. But folks, what happens as soon as you virtualize and the Windows IO tax even appears in a physical environment, but these two inefficiencies enter into the fray in virtualized environments, the Windows IO tax and the IO blender effect. Uh, and GQ, do you wanna talk a little bit about how those impact uh, performance and IO? Be glad to, Dan. You know, uh, the first one is the Windows I.O. tax. And this is actually caused by the Windows file system. Rather than a nice sequential write being sent out when data is written to a file or extended, it actually gets broken up into a lot of smaller random I.O.s, 
and and this really costs you not only extra work to handle the extra IOs, but you're also not taking advantage of your storage because if whenever you buy storage, whether it's SSDs, flash, you know, hard disk drives, they always give you two benchmarks, one for random IOs and one for sequential IOs. And you'll notice that the sequential IOs always outperform the random IOs. So if we can enforce sequential IOs to go there, you're gonna get the best performance, okay? But Windows does not do this. And this is what the Windows IO tax is. When a file gets created or extended, Windows doesn't know how big it's going to be. So on the virtual machine, and there's all the logical side there, it just looks for the next allocation on that volume to put that data. Well, if that allocation isn't big enough, it has to go find another allocation and so forth and so forth. Well, each of those allocation is an extra IO. So it tends to break it up into a lot of small random IOs. And then besides that, now when you're coming down to the hypervisor, you got all these random IOs coming from all these virtual machines down there. And now they get into this what we call that blender effect it has to handle some from another handle some from another and it that costs a lot in performance so you're going to get degradation because of that io blender effect thanks dan well thank you gq so folks here if you're going to write a gigabyte of data it might take you a hundred thousand ios with our software and its uh, uh, io optimization properties it might only take you 50 or 60,000 IOs. So you can just think about what that means from a, from a throughput improvement performance standpoint and also application performance improvement. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. And also one of the best practices is for us to not only install on a single VM in a host environment, but really to put us across all the VMs in that host environment. Because as depicted here, uh, and by the way, we're, we optimize across all Windows applications, so not just SQL benefits from uh, our patented IO reduction software, but SharePoint, Exchange, file servers, domain controllers, web servers, anything running any kind of Windows IO will benefit from our software. And as you can see here, if we optimize just one VM in a, on a single host, while that's fine for that one application, all of the other applications on that host are still generating all those small, tiny, random, noisy IOs, which, as GQ spoke about, get further randomized after they hit the hypervisor. So again, our best practice is to put us across all of the VMs on a host, and one of our licensing models accomplishes that. It's a host, we call it a host-based license, but it covers all the VMs on a host. Whether you have five, 10, 20, 30, all are covered by that single license. So where do we sit? And we've talked about this here now. We sit in the OS, on the guest, guest OS, above everything in the environment. So if it's compatible with Windows, it's compatible with us. It doesn't matter what hypervisor's running, what HBA cards, network, et cetera, and what kind of storage is on the back end. And you'll see examples where we, we you know, people have seen significant performance improvement, even running hyperconverged environments or all flash. So again, we're this orange stripe sitting up in the OS, optimizing and presenting the most efficient I.O. for your environment to handle. Comments, GQ? Well, the reason why we're there is this is where the I.O. is getting created by the application. So if we can optimize that I.O. there, you're going to get the best benefit. And also, you, you, what's happening is we're optimizing the I.O. there. It's still a Windows I.O., but now you can say it's a optimize Windows I.O. So anything below it 
were fully compatible with it. You know, the the hypervisors, whether it's uh, VM, uh, Microsoft, Citrix, uh, doesn't matter to us. And the storage too, we're agnostic to that. We're also agnostic to the applications happening on the windows there, because we're looking at the IOs and seeing how to optimize it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, GQ. Appreciate it. So uh, again, hopefully that kind of just gives you a clear picture of where it is we sit uh, in the environment. Uh, so what is it we do, as we said, more large contiguous writes with more payload with every IO operation. Uh, we'll talk about that and also our patented caching engine that uses idle and available DRAM to cache those performance-robbing read IOs. They never have to take the trip to storage and back again. So memory to memory transfer is the fastest possible, 10 to 15 times faster than flash. We actually trademark the set it and forget it moniker. So we beat the Ronco chicken guy to that. But because of that, we are set it and forget it software. We want in the background, everything's automated. So people say everything's running great, but you know what is it you, you guys are doing? So GQ and his team, again, responded to customer requests and they built a, a benefits dashboard, which we'll show an example of, that, that lets you and demonstrates to you what it is the software is doing for you. And while we haven't had to do this yet, you know, we guarantee to solve your tough, toughest performance problems or your money back. So with that, I'm going to spend a little time here about what the two patented engines are, both in Telerite and in Telememory. And I'm going to turn to my expert again, GQ, to talk to you about that. Thanks, Dan. And, you know, this, this will go to answering a question from Derek about, are you queuing up IOs? Uh, a lot of people, Derek, a lot of people think, oh, you must be queuing up all those small random IOs and then then put out a single IO. We don't do that, Derek, because uh, there's a risk to that. What happens if the system goes down uh, while we have them all queued up? There's a, So what we do is a very simple approach, but very effective. As I indicated before, the Windows file system doesn't know when a file gets created or extended, how big it's going to be. So it just looks for the next allocation, and that may not be big enough. Well, what we're doing is we are monitoring your system in the background, and we know over time, you know, when a certain file type or certain application, when a file gets created or extended, how big it's going to be. And we actually just feed that intelligence back to the Windows file system. So now the Windows file system, when a file gets created or extended, it looks for the best fit allocation. So it can write it out all in one single IO. So, and you know, as I indicated before, storage, you'll get the optimal performance out of your storage by doing nice sequential IO, but also you're going to get these other benefits. As you know, indicated before, look at this, rather than four IOs for a single write, now it's now it's a nice single IO. So you're increasing also the bandwidth of that network for other work to be done. And, you know, here's a good analogy I like to uh, do is if you're going to carry a gallon of water from one place to another, do you do it with 100 Dixie cups or do you just take it in one big gallon bucket and do it all at one time? And that's what we're enforcing. We're just giving intelligence to the file system so it can do a better job. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, fit. Thank you, GQ. So again, folks, we're, we're really like a personal trainer to Windows, right? Windows does the work. We're just telling it what to do and do it in the most optimized fashion. So GQ, what about our patented caching engine and telememory? Oh, you know, we, we I just indicated how we will help with writes. So what about the reads? And what we have there is a very intelligent caching technology there. And we're, as Dan indicated, you know, nine out of the top 10 
OEM manufacturers and some storage uh, manufacturers actually license our technology. You haven't heard of us because they license it under their name, but they license us because we're very unique. And we're unique in this way. First of all, how we use your memory. We're very dynamic. Uh, it's, you know, you don't have to go and allocate memory for us to use as cash. We're going to use what's available and not being used by the system. So let's say there, you know, you have a system that has four gigabytes of available memory. Well, we'll go ahead and use what's available there. And we'll also, also always keep a gig and a half at a minimum always available. So of that four gig, we'll only use two and a half. And if any user or system process needs it, we automatically give it back. So there's never a memory contention issue. So that's the first step. The next step is our unique innovation of what to put and keep in cash for the best performance. You know, some cash caching products will just say, this data was just read in, let me put it in cash and hope it gets read in again. Okay, but it's not very effective and not very efficient. We, we do two things. One is we're monitoring your system to see what data is getting read the most often. So this is data that will get hit in the cache more often. Then second, because we know certain patterns of data will cause more degradation than others, we know that data, if we were to catch that, is going to give better benefits. So knowing what's getting hit and what data gives you the best benefits, by putting that in cash, we're going to get the best performance from using your available memory. And what does this do? Well, as we said, we sit right there at the VM where the applications are creating the I.O. If we can satisfy that I.O. right there from cache on that system, we just prevented that I.O. having to go to the network, to the storage, to get satisfied. So we just eliminated all that extra time. Plus, the added benefit is, look at, we just decreased the traffic on that network. So we just increased the bandwidth for other people to use that bandwidth. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, GQ. So again, two patented filter drivers, folks. If you think about it, you know, it's pretty simple what it is we do. Uh, make those small random writes large and contiguous. And actually, as GQ just mentioned, put those performance robbing read IOs automatically into available DRAM for the application to use 15 times faster than flash. So pretty significant. Uh, I mentioned too about a set it and forget it software. So GQ again and his team built this dashboard uh, to, to help folks see and, and understand what it is the software is doing in their environment. So GQ, you wanna walk us through this page? GQ, you there? Sorry, Dan. Uh, you know, it says IO is eliminated. But let me clarify that. These are IOs el eliminated from having to go to storage to get satisfied. So in this case, and this is this is our system in just the last three weeks, we el eliminated 9,500,000 IOs. Of those, about 65% were re-IDOs, and that's because of the caching. And the caching was able to satisfy it so it eliminated from having to go through the network to the storage. And then the right IOs, by eliminating a lot of those random IOs and making a nice sequential IOs, we eliminated all these small right IOs from going down there. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, since we know the latency of the IOs, how long it would take, we actually know what storage IO time is being saved there. And in this case, uh, it shows 20 hours of I.O. time being saved on this system for the last three weeks. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Yeah, that's no, great. And folks, we have customers that have are seeing billions of I.O.s being eliminated and hundreds of days of I.O. storage time 
over a two-year period of being saved uh, with our simple uh, uh, IO reduction software, uh, fully automated, nothing for anyone to do. Pretty, pretty incredible. So, you know, we talked about examples and, and folks, I'm not going to read through all of these. You can, re you can read them faster than I can speak. Uh, and really what's important at the end of the day is what can we do for you in your environment? But just wanted to share a few of these for it with you. Christus Health, one of the largest healthcare institutions in Texas, uh, had been, had been a disc keeper corp com com customer, excuse me. They virtualized and they ran into some performance issues. So they were going to have to upgrade their storage environment. They're going to have to spend $2 million to upgrade that environment. They had heard about Velocity. They said, hey, why don't we try it? We were a DiskKeeper customer and, and we know how well that worked. So they put in our software and they were able to delay and postpone that $2 million spend for over two years. Just pretty amazing. And they're a great customer of ours today, they've got us on 2,700 uh, VMs across their entire environment. Look at Bell Mobility down here, the, the, the Verizon of Canada. Look at ha what happened. They reduced IO to SAM by 61% for 3X faster SQL queries. We were only talking about 2X at the beginning. So phenomenal. ASL marketing, they dropped their SQL batch imports by 15 hours just by installing uh, our software and then letting it optimize their environment. And Creative Office, response time for SQL and other applications are 90% faster. And you can read the, read the other ones. For the heck of it, I thought I'd throw a few more in. One of them it happens to be at, at the top, there's a customer of mine, University of Illinois. Uh, they did a 72-hour benchmark. They get. They also had been a disk keeper cu customer. They also virtualized. Uh, we're in one of their smaller data centers that manages all of the facilities uh, operations across the university. They have their own power plant. They make their own furniture. And this application also manages all the card swipes of the 50,000 students. But they did a 72-hour benchmark. Before Velocity, this application uh, took four and a half hours to run on. This is all on brand new hardware, all flash environment, Dell 730 servers. It generated 13.9 million IOs to disk, and that generated about you know 1.1 1. 1 and a half petabytes of store of app information. 72 hours later, after installing Velocity, 13.9 million IOs to disk went to 2.7 four hours of processing time in the same application took an hour and a half and they processed another half a terabyte of, half a petabyte of data in the hour and a half just they are ecstatic about what they saw on on a brand new all flash environment which they were happy with to begin with and greg landis the it director uh, told me when I said, gee, Greg, this is great. You can sweat these asset longer, assets longer. He looked at me and said, yeah, Dan, I can. But what you've allowed me to do with this IO reduction is I can add more applications to this existing environment. I've spent all my budget already on this new hardware, but you've given me the headroom to add more applications and grow uh, with your software. You've probably read some of the other ones here. They're all on our website. Uh, but they all have still, they, they themselves have some phenomenal results just by installing our patented IO reduction software. So how to guarantee 2x faster SQL performance? Well, we have some best practices. Um, one is we do need at least three or four gig of available DRAM, uh, and that's free and available. Um, we actually keep the first gig and a half totally free in case the uh, the application needs needs to use that uh, available DRAM. Uh, and then after that, we begin building our cache. And, and believe it or not, folks, if the, if the application even needs more memory that we're using, we'll flush the cache automatically and give it back to the application. Another actually best practice is to cap SQL's max memory and cap it appropriately. So yes, because SQL will eat, will eat all of the memory that you uh, make available to it. So 
a best practice is to caps equals max memory. And then fascinatingly, you can use the velocity dashboard that we showed you before to, to monitor what's happening in your environment. There's another page that talks about memory utilization, and you can use that to help monitor uh, what, what's being used and actually then add more available DRAM if there's not enough available or you think you can get even more performance out of that. GQ, some comments here? Dan, I think the biggest thing is, uh, because we're talking about SQL here, and I should note that even though we're talking about SQL here, SQL is, that's because SQL is very IO intensive, but any type of servers that are systems that are IO intensive is going to get the best, uh, still going to get great benefits uh, because that's file servers, Outlook, any of those will give benefits. But the big thing here with SQL is SQL is not very efficient and not very smart on using memory. Uh, it will tend to try to load all its, by default, all its databases into memory and use it all up, even though uh, a lot of those databases or parts of it aren't even getting access. So it's on those cases, need to make sure that you cap SQL and leave a little bit of memory for us to take advantage of. Fact is, we, you know, uh, a third-party uh, lab did some benchmark, and they uh, they limited SQL to so we had four gigabytes of memory, and we increased the transaction rate, I believe, 60 or 65 percent. So uh, make sure that you have available memory when you're doing. Uh, your benchmarking here, Dan. Super, GQ, thanks so much. So folks, as I mentioned earlier, just by attending the uh, webinar today, you're gonna be receiving uh, a free NFR, fully you know, licensed of software a copy of Velocity for use on a particular VM. Uh, and really, uh, one thing both GQ and I haven't mentioned so far, is that with our with a release out a year ago April, so out for a year and a half now, GQ and his team broke the code. Uh, they've been working on this for years, but there is no reboot required, no reboot required to install our software uh, in any Windows OS. Pr truly just amazing uh, that GQ and his team uh, were able to accomplish that. But so what does that mean? You can literally, the longest time it takes to install our software is to download it. Then it's about four mouse clicks and you're off and running. The software starts optimizing. You pull up the dashboard after a few days to see you know, what uh, benefits you're receiving from an IO reduction standpoint. And or hopefully you may have had some benchmarks before you installed our software around how certain applications, how much time they may have taken, et cetera. Uh, because as opposed to just saying, well, does it feel like it's going faster? Uh, certainly having some specific facts uh, was a better benchmark than just the feel good route. But we also talked about installing across all the VMs in a, on a host and or in your environment. And so we work with our, with our prospects and customers to do just that. So we'll give you all the software you need to put across all the VMs on a particular host and any number of hosts in your environment that you'd like to optimize all the VMs on. Uh, as a result of a webinar two weeks ago, I had a customer install us across eight hosts uh, and approximately 75 VMs in those, in, on those hosts. Again, remember, it's no reboot to install. It literally took him probably 10 minutes to complete the installation across all of those VMs. It's really a, a number of mouse clicks, walk away, get a cup of coffee and iced tea, come back and we're installed and running. So we'd love to work with you if you'd like to expand the environment that you put us on. And again, that's the best practice, put us on all the VMs uh, on a particular host uh, so that we don't get the noisy neighbor effect 
from those VMs that aren't optimized into creating all of those small, tiny random IOs that get further randomized by the hypervisor. So love to work with you on that. GQ, uh, any questions out there? We do have some good questions out here, Dan. So let, let's dive into them. Uh, I see from Bill. He, he had a few here, and then we'll get to the others. He asked, would this work on a server farm for our website? And if those servers are running Windows, then Bill, yes, it will work. And then he said, so it would not do much unless you installed this software on all hosts. And and Bill, you know what Dan just indicated, we actually don't get installed on the host. We actually get installed on the guests or the virtual machines under that host, the ones running Windows. Now, it's not required to run, you don't have to run it on every, you know, client under that host or guest systems under that host. You can just put on the systems that are suffering from, you know, IO degradations the most. But if you want to get the best performance, yeah, you want to try and put it on all the, uh, all the VMs under that host. And the reason why is, although you're optimizing, you know, a couple of the VMs or one, the other VMs are still using that same uh, network and the same storage down there to, uh, you know, bottleneck that IO. So you'd like to try and put on all of them. Not required, but if you want to see the best benefits. And then Bill had one last question. So a VM doesn't does not need to be defrag? Well, Bill, what we're doing here by preventing those extra IOs, we're actually preventing fragmentation from occurring. Now, there may be some fragmentation that was already on the system before you installed us, and this product will still take care of those, the fragmentation that is causing performance degradation problems. So uh, Velocity will do that. Okay. Then Dan, I'm going to, Ilya has some questions about licensing. First one is, what is a cost price server model per CPU? And then I'll, before I, I give that, he also asks, is individual license same as server license for using so the software? Great, thanks, GQ. So, so the answer I, I believe is is yes. And when I say yes, meaning we have two licensing models. One is what we call a host license, and a host license covers all of the VMs on a particular host. Uh, so you may have again five, ten, twenty, thirty VMs on a host. Uh, they're all covered by the host license. And by the way, our licenses are perpetual. There's a one-time charge, and then there's an annual maintenance that provides technical support, all of the enhancements and upgrades that get delivered uh, during a particular year. The per server license is just that. It's a per VM license, or a, you know, if you're a physical server, a per server license. And it would cover just, again, a, a single VM uh, on a host uh, or a physical machine. And the, uh, the price break becomes advantageous for a host license when you have seven or more VMs on a host. Seven or more, the host license is, is much more favorable to you from a cost perspective. If you have six or less, then the per VM model is the way to go. GQ. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. And then, well, I'll get back. I think Ilya, I see down below, has another question about licensing, but we'll get to that. Uh, Selva asked, does Velocity software work with physical SQL servers connected to flash drives? And Selva, yes, it does. Uh, you know, although we've been talking about a virtual environment, the physical systems suffer those same IO degradation issues just a little bit differently. For instance, uh, the IO tax, that still happens on physical systems. Uh, it happens within Windows, so whether physical or virtual. You know that IO blender effect, 
you could have that occur on physical systems when you have multiple physical systems all uh, you know connected to different lens but all on the same sand so you get that same blender effect so although we talked about physical yes it works on I meant we talk about virtual this works fine on the physical SQL servers too then Steve has a good, good question he says how can I monitor prior to installing your software and after so we can actually uh, determine performance gain to determine ROI and then uh, there's there's a couple ways of doing this Steve first of all if you know some benchmarks of your applications know see you know bring up reports or something like that time them before putting on our product then time them afterwards but with our dashboard you could also do one of a couple things here one is you can install our product and disable all the features and then look at the dashboard and see what's happening and then turn us on and see the amount of IOs being eliminated uh, from having to go to storage then a second option that's in the product it actually does uh, uh, has a feature where it will measure performance you know and you can set the time let's say two days and it will gather benchmarks and then enable all the features and do the same two days of benchmarking and then give you a report of of with and without the only problem with that Steve is that sometimes the load on the system changes so it's not always an apple to apples comparison but it's there for you to use there uh, then he uh, Steve also had a second question what if my application server is Linux and my DB server is Windows how much perform will will actually be seen uh, you, of course we don't actually uh, optimize on the Linux server itself not yet at least we are looking at Linux uh, but it's the Windows server that we're going to give you the performance gains but what happens is because we're increasing the bandwidth of the network and the storage by decreasing the traffic on it you also that's more bandwidth for your other Linux servers to use so you will get benefits on a non Windows servers too uh, let's see here we have Jim he says we have some Windows virtual machines that are actually hosted on proprietary hosts that utilize Linux would your software work on such a setup or does a host have to be Windows based no that's that's what's nice about our solution Jim we're agnostic to the host and so and we just get installed on those virtual machines running Windows so work fine on there and uh, uh, look forward to you trying it on there then Steve asks like the dashboard how can I monitor my IO rights from SQL Server prior to installing your software to actually compare well let's see here I guess you could use you know some of the my tools with Windows or Steve as I said you could install us and then disable all the features and then the dashboard will still work and you can see what's happening and then turn us on and see how much we're actually eliminating and then back to you uh, Dan how would the licensing look for a SQL always on cluster? Well, again, GQ, it depends how many uh, VMs uh, are involved in, in, in the environment. Um, but if it's a, you know, if it's an active passive environment, we really only uh, license the, the active side. If, you know, if the other side is really there just for a failover or whatever, uh, we generally leave, can leave that unlicensed and happy to chat with you more about that. Thanks, Dan. And uh, Ilya, just, uh, I just want to clarify, this is a virtual machine, not Cal slash user license. It's 
license per virtual machine. Yes, uh, Ilya, you can get a license per virtual machine, or as Dan said, you could buy a host license, which means it covers all of the virtual machines under that host. But it doesn't matter, right, how many sockets there are or cores or whatever. We really just try to simplify it. And so it's either per VM, per physical server, or as GQ again just mentioned, uh, all the VMs on a host. Okay. Uh, Hector has a, has a couple questions here. He says, normally when I try to put SQL with the memory limits to give OS more memory, it normally creates problems with our system. Then I have it in dynamic, but it consumes 92% of the 64 gigabytes of memory. How does your software manage to fit there? And that's the first question. Uh, well, first of all, I guess uh, we have to find out why it's giving you problems when you try to put uh, memory limits on it. Hector, and uh, we can work with you on there because uh, that's how you're having that problem without us even being installed. So we probably want to look at that and maybe we want to start at a very, uh, you know, low gradient where you just put some smaller memory limits, just give us a little bit of memory to see uh, what kind of performance. But uh, the SE sales engineers can work with you on there. Then Hector had a second question here, and uh, it's about the licenses. And Dan, he says, we use Nutanix. Is it licensed by cluster, host, VM? I think you answered this already, but maybe just go over it one more time. Sure. So, and we actually have, an, we have a couple of customers, actually, Hector, that have us on Nutanix. Um, and it really, again, it's, it's either per VM or all the VMs on a particular host. Um, so I hope that that helps. Happy to chat with you more about it. Um, this one customer happens to be a fairly specific, I'm thinking of happens to be a fairly large government uh, agency, uh, and they're just seeing fantastic results on there in, uh, with us installed in a Nutanix environment. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Sure. And then Jim just, you know, uh, he says you discuss virtual machines a lot, but would Velocity work on the traditional dedicated SQL Server, non-virtualized? Yes, Jim. Uh, when you get yours, uh, free NFR, yes. Just install it right there on your uh, physical SQL Server. And Pete asks, does this product work in a VMware environment? Yes, it does. As we're as indicated, we're agnostic to the hypervisor. So just on the virtual machines running Windows. Uh, Ilya asked about cluster licensing, and I know you asked about that, uh, covered that before, Dan, um, about, you know, if it's active pass, only one of them is being active, uh, you can work with them because only one is being used at a time. And then Ilya asked, Dan, and this is for you again, price per host, please. Well, folks, a great question. So uh, first time in my life as a salesperson, I ever asked for a price increase, but our, our perpetual license price on a host base for the lowest discount, one to nine hosts is $3,800. So folks, for $3,800, you could get 2X application performance improvement on your existing hardware. Just incredible. What 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 the price performance uh, is for our product? Thanks, Dan. Yep. And uh, Jeremy, I think we answered. Oh no, no. Jeremy asked, "Does this solution work on VMs on the public cloud, AWS, Azure?" Yes, it does, Jeremy. If you got the infrastructure or uh, that system that you know access to it you can install it on those systems there and get the performance gains if i could uh, you, jeremy great question i'm glad you brought it up because we have customers that have us installed uh you know in the public cloud and as gq mentioned as long as you have access to the vms you can install us obviously but what they're seeing is because of our performance improvements they can actually reduce the cost or go to the lower level of 
you know, cloud storage and get the same or better performance that they were paying up for at the next level up, whatever that might be. So in effect, they're actually saving, they paid for our software and are saving money in their cloud environment. Thanks, Dan. Yep. And yes, and, and that's because, you know, some, some uh, cloud solutions charge per, per IO. And if we can decrease the IO going to storage, well, we just save you some money there. Uh, Kevin asked about SQL environment on physical systems. Physical SQL environments, and Kevin, yes, uh, as answered before, we work great on on physical systems. Uh, Kevin, another Kevin asks, is this application already part of SQL Management Studio? Kevin, it is not yet. It's just a standalone application. Uh, then Ilya asks, can that free use, free license, can it be used on the cluster or individual? Yes, it can. Is it, oh, David, good question. If it is easy to uninstall, how easy it is to uninstall? Good question, <laughs> David. Yes, you know, as as uh, Dan indicated, no reboot required when installing and no reboot to uninstall. And, you know, just minutes to install, minutes to uninstall. Uh, and if I may, we are just a service also, so you can just turn us off. Yes, that disables us too. Uh, here, I, I'll let you answer this one. Dan, a support for Oracle on Windows. Oh, wow, well, if you, absolutely. And we have seen, if you remember the, the University of Illinois example that I gave, dropping uh, in 72 hours after installing Velocity, dropping, uh, on a particular Oracle workload, we went from they went from 13.9 million IOs to disk to 2.7, and uh, they dropped their runtime from four hours to an hour and a half, and that was on an all flash environment. We just rock on an Oracle on Windows environment. Great, thank you, Dan. Uh, Muyi asks. Will Velocity introduce extra possible flaw for system I.O.? If yes, how to manage it? Now, maybe you can uh, come back with, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by extra possible fault. Now, you know, and I'll, I'll go back to, there's another question here. Does the, you know, your caching, does that cause any data integrity issue? What, this, what happens if the system crashes? Uh, we are a read-only cache. And what that means is the data that's in our cache is already down on your storage, on your, uh, on your storage there. So even if the system crashes, the storage uh, has your data. We're just satisfying reads there. So if that read comes in and we have cache, we can satisfy it without having to go in the storage to get it. Data integrity is our number one goal. And uh, so we want to keep it safe. Then Clint asks, does this product work with an availability group? We run a three node cluster and the second node allows reads. Now, uh, is this a clustered shared volume? Clint, I, I will ask you that. If it is a cluster shared volume, you'll get the other performance gains, but not uh, in telememory right now in its current version will be disabled on a clustered shared volume. Uh, but you'll get the, all the performance gains from all the other uh, technology of the product. And let's see here, Dan. Good questions, GQ. Oh yeah, great questions. Let me see if we got any more here. Uh, I think we can answer that. They asked, someone asked, does it get installed on the host or the VM? It gets installed on the virtual machine. And- In minutes, GQ. Yes. And I think that's it, Dan. Good, wow. good group here. 
Great questions. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for hanging in there with us. Appreciate it. So I hope I hope you've you're excited about uh, receiving your your uh, per server license uh, uh, via email here after the the webinar is over. Uh, but again, in and what's most important, of course, to you and to us is what you see in your environment. So we are very motivated and and very excited to work with you. To make, to, to make sure that uh, we can provide the greatest benefit to you and to your environment. So once you receive the, the NFR copy of the software, if you'd like to install across more VMs, across a host, across multiple hosts, please reach back to us. Uh, we'll jump on a call with you. We'll send you the software that you need, and uh, we'll work with you to, to ensure that you're getting the best uh, performance possible by using our patented IO reduction software. So that'll be coming. Take a look, look out for that email. Uh, GQ, thank you, folks. First, thank you for hanging in there with us. Uh, all the great questions. We appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. GQ, thanks so much for your participation uh, uh, with, it, with the team today and for answering all those questions. So, folks, we look forward to work with you. So thanks again for joining. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone.